great. Hi, Bailey. Hey, everybody. Hi. Bailey. Hi. Hi, Bailey's mom. Oh. Um, so, uh, we are going to have a little bit of a different format today so that we oh, can no. get. Um, there you go. Um, what the? Um, <laughs> hello. Hello. Hey, everybody. Um, okay, so. <laughs> Today, we're going to have a little bit of a different format so that we can. Um... Do you have another meeting? No. Vince? Um... Oh, okay. So, okay, guys, uh, we're going to have a little bit of a different format today. What we're going to do is we're going to spend um, 10 minutes to check in on your homeschool and see what projects that you did you do and what they look like. Um, so if we can do that at all, that'd be great. We have 17 participants, which is fantastic. So um, does anybody wanna uh, share what projects they worked on yesterday? Um, I have the chat open. If anyone wants to type in what projects they worked on, I will try and find those projects and, uh, or you guys can talk about how did, how did they go. Um, ball boy. So Niles worked on ball boy yesterday, which is fantastic. Um, Niles, how did it go? And ski free. JK worked on ski free, which is fantastic. Superman and flash logo. That's great. Those are awesome projects. Um, that is great. And anybody else want to talk about what projects they, uh, they did draw a car. That's awesome. Guys, if you have, if, you, if you're, and Superman, um, and Justin tried to finish Spinning Planets, uh, but the computer kept crashing. Um, whole Staples Logo Challenge 3. Um, that's great. So if, if any of you guys are, are hearing this and haven't done any of these projects, they're awesome projects. So it's just ideas for you to go explore that, um, to, to, to give you ideas of, of what projects to finish. Bent Square and Gray Frat, Great difference. Um, that's amazing. So a lot of projects are getting done, which is really, really fantastic. Um, and uh, so that's great. Oh, uh, Bailey did tennis ball. Awesome, Bailey. That's fantastic. It's really, really good. Um, good. So those are like a whole bunch of projects, and maybe we can do a bunch of those projects today as we uh, as we go through. I want to see if any of them are fun. Um, we could go through, we did ball boy. Ski free is a little bit advanced. So maybe we do that close to the end of the session. And uh, we could do draw a car, uh, an egg thrower. Let's, let's, let's just take a look at draw a car and egg thrower because um, those seem at least a little bit interesting. So, um, and keep putting the projects that you've done in the chat. We'll, we'll take a look at them. So here we have our projects again. And um, we're gonna we're gonna just go through draw a car um, to get draw a car draw a car. So this is actually part of a series that you start with draw a car and then you eventually turn it into a car game. Uh, there are three components, which is which is great. So the first is to draw the, the sky and draw the ground that the car will draw draw on. So there's this function called draw background. Uh, background. Um, uh, equals function. And, um, and then call the no stroke function. So that'd be no stroke. Uh, and then open bracket, close bracket, semicolon. Set the background color for the sky. And so again, what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to actually go sky blue RGB. Um, you guys can see the screen, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. So sky blue RGB says it's 135, 206, 235. So I'm gonna go, uh, make sure I got that right. Um, 135, 206, 135, uh, 206, 235. 
And when, when we have an idea for color, we don't necessarily have to keep playing with the numbers over and over. We could actually just do a Google search. And when you do that, just go the name of the color and RGB, and then uh, you'll, you'll get an answer usually at the very, very top. And that'll help you uh, get the right color right away. Um, so fill color for the ground. And again, we're just gonna go um, ground RGB, uh, earth tones in light hex. So we can click on here. I'm going to pick a good ground color. How about this one over here? So we're going to go 148.62.15. I don't know if I can copy and paste. I can. Okay. So you can copy and paste from the outside um, anytime you want to, or maybe not. Maybe you have to type it in. Um, and then finally, we're going to draw a rectangle um, at position 0, 200, which is right on the edge over here. The top left corner is going to be in the middle. And we're going to go size 400, 200 which is gonna be all the way across and all the way down. So we do that and then uh, the next piece is to draw a car on the ground. So I bet you this is gonna go var draw car equals function, open bracket, close bracket, and semicolon. Um, and there were a few more chats, so I just wanna do a call out for the, um, Bailey did hockey sticks, and does ball game count as a project because it's a group project? Um, if it's a group project, it won't count as a project, but you get to do it as a group. One thing that we're doing uh, sometime in the next day or two or three is we're going to give everybody an entry-level group project. So you guys can do a group project together with any of your friends. Um, and it's going to be like really uh, entry-level coding stuff. So as long as you've done one, two, three, four projects, you'll have enough coding background to be able to, to do these um, new beginner level group projects, which we think is, is actually really, really fun because um, you know everybody's by themselves and uh, we can't visit our friends. And it's not the same as visiting our friends, but at least if we can like do a group project with our friends, that can uh, make things better. And uh, th those are some awesome backgrounds in the background for Linan. Is that your name, Linan? That you have the... Uh, you have the, the dragon background in there? That's really cool. Yeah, that's me. That's you. And what's your name? Uh, Ethan. Ethan. Awesome, Ethan. Those are, those are awesome backgrounds. Um, on Zoom, if you want, there's an option uh, under, I think it's under video, where you can actually choose a virtual background. And if you do that, you can get uh, a whole bunch of different backgrounds. If you can't do it yourself, um, you can always ask your parent to help you. But basically, where it says stop video, Next to it, there's this little um, menu carrot, and you can choose a virtual background, and that way it doesn't have to be the background of your house anymore. It can be um, uh, the background of dragons and clouds, like Ethan has, which is like really, really cool. So I think that's awesome. Okay, so the next component is draw a car on the ground. We're gonna pick the fill color for the car. Ethan, you're there, pick a color for a car. Um. Uh, blue. Blue. Okay, so we're going to go red, green, blue. Um, and then we're going to start drawing this car, which is going to be a rectangle at uh, 210, 180, which kind of looks like the center of the screen and size 20, 10. Um, and in fact, we want to see what this looks like. Um, the, the very last component says create a main loop and form any actions that need to happen continuously. To me, that sounds like a draw function. So I'm not even going to break it down one time because I know that's a draw function. And when it says over here, uh, perform any actions that need to happen continuously. Well, a lot of times when you do a draw function, all you're doing is you're calling the, the functions above it. So I'm just going to call draw background over here. And, um, and here we have our sky and our ground, and then we're gonna have draw a car. Um, and we can go open bracket. And now we can kind of see it. And now I've done this bottom component at English description, which is like a level nine, uh, level nine difficulty. So if you're going from level nine to level 10 or eight to nine, you need a, uh, an English description. So that's kind of a cheat you can do. If you ever see that the, the very last component says, create a main loop and perform any actions that need to happen continuously, that's code for just call all the functions above it. Um, and as you see, that's what we're doing. We're just calling draw background and we're calling draw car. And now we have one component at English description, which is awesome. So we have this first rectangle. 
we're going to draw another rectangle over here, which is going to be like another part of the car, uh, which is um, there's one at 21190, and then there's one at uh, 200. Uh, oh, and this one says it's 40. Um, did okay. I get that right? And then two, 210, 180. Okay, I set the fill color for the wheels. So the wheels in my mind are black. So I'm just gonna make them black. Um, and then we're gonna do ellipse, uh, 210, 200, comma, 10, comma, 10. And we have like a little bit of a wheel and we're gonna have this other wheel, which is just gonna be a little bit over. So look, there we have uh, a little car. And we can take a look at that and say that that big rectangle is a little bit off, I think. I'm gonna actually move it back. What happens if I move it back? 190? Nope, how about 200? There we go, that looks good. Um, so that is draw a car and we can do the challenges, change the color of the car, which we've kind of already done one time, but let me just put in uh, some, okay. some other numbers in here, let's say 170. And then if we do like 40 um, or we do 255, there, yeah. we ha no, let's do like 100. Oh, that's going to be a little bit. But let's keep it uh, just like a purple car. Uh, and so that's a nice, easy one-star challenge. Uh, add scenery to your project. So we could draw a bunch of stuff, um, you know, just create uh, another function. I'm not going to do the whole thing, uh, but, but we could basically create a whole other function and call it uh, draw trees. Uh, and we could just create a fill color of some, uh, I'm gonna create some minimalist trees here. So this is gonna be green. Yeah. And we're really just gonna do a rectangle over here. Um, uh, and where could this tree go? So I'm gonna make this at 100 and like 150 and 10 and then 50. Um, and then we just have to call it draw trees, right? So we're inventing stuff right here. There's your minimalist tree. It actually probably should be brown. So I'm gonna say 182 uh, and make this like maybe 40 um, and make this 40. I don't know, that's not quite a brown tree. So let's see, uh, again, let's do a Google search and say uh, tree trunk RGB. Uh, tree trunk brown. It says 835310. So let's change this to 835310. Uh, and 10. There we have our, our tree our tree trunk. Minimalist tree and we could we could add some stuff to it as well. So I'm gonna call that finished, although you can make it a lot more complicated if you want. And that is uh, draw car. So we're gonna say I'm finished with that. Um, okay, so we did that. Uh, check in on homeschool, big wins and little victories. So did anyone yesterday, did anyone make it onto the leaderboard? Um, do you guys know where the leaderboard is? Do you, do you want me to um, like find it again? I did. You did, you made it onto the leaderboard? Yeah. Yeah, what, yeah. which, which, pro, which uh, project did you make it on? Um, I think it's the Flash logo. Okay, let's see. So there's a leaderboard. Let's see if we can find Bailey up here on the leaderboard. I think that's gonna be awesome. Uh, let's see, so if we go last week, um, let's see, Bailey, Bailey, is it Flash? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Oops, I can't type. No, so it's not there. Uh, let's see. Um, or it was on the leaderboard. Do you remember how many points you got for it? I don't know. No, I don't remember. Okay, you don't remember. Um, but that's really awesome. Did anybody else get on the leaderboard? Don't worry, don't worry about those formulas. The, the... Uh, what's the leaderboard for? Hey, Kingsley. So the leaderboard is just a fun way of, uh, of, of keeping track of how you're doing. Uh, and if you can create really awesome projects vis-a-vis -vis everybody in the Hatch universe. So these are all the people in the last week who are part of Hatch uh, Hatch at Home Prime Casual. There's 223 students. We have almost um, almost 3,000 projects. And we can see over here that this stick figure got a bunch of creativity points and a bunch of project points. Uh, so for 4,500 total points, 
and we can take a look over here. Look, it's like a super creative stick figure, which is like really awesome. So that's great. And the house drawing over here, look, there's a house, there's some trees, there's a sun, and it looks pretty cool. Uh, and create an animal cell. Create an animal cell with a whole bunch of stuff here. And this is a super awesome science project that someone did, and, and they got like 4,000 points. So how do you get to the leaderboard from the website? That's a really good question. We're, we're adding that uh, probably in the next day or so. Uh, for now, what you have to remember is, I'm just going to put these links over here. Uh, so we have three types of classes, and so we have three leaderboards. Um, the first one is for casual, the second one is for dedicated, and the third one is for serious. So it's basically 3782, 3783, and 3784. And these leaderboards just went up. We're probably going to come up with like a better URL for them. But for now, um, that's how you get to the leaderboards. You just have to know. Um, uh, know so Kinsley has a question over here. Don't you always get the same number of points from a project? And the answer is no. So the points you get for each project really depend on, um, on how well you've done that project. Oh. And I'm trying to think if there's a way of me showing that. Um, so this was Wendy at Hatch Coding. Let's see if I can show you that. So I'm going to go over here. And uh, um, and if we go to staff, I'm going to actually load up this, uh, this Wendy, um, uh, Wendy at Hatch Coding. Ooh, I can't find it. So hold on a second. Okay. I go staff, admin site. I'm going to actually go to this user and turn them into a student. So I can actually pop them up, uh, Wendy. So if we go in here and we're going to make uh, a student so I can show you this student um, and then save. So now Wendy is a student. And now if I go to um, the staff page, I'm going to go to student account summary. I should be able to say Wendy at Hatch coding.com. So here's the page and I'm going to uh, new share this page over here. Um, okay. Can you, can all of you see the student account summary? Can someone say yes? Yep. Okay. So if we go down to yeah. the bottom, these are all the projects that we've actually done in these webinars. We've done all these projects and if we show the individual hatch level report. What you see is that every time you do a component or a challenge, you get 100 points here or 200 points there or 100 points here. And, or, or if you do an English description, you can get 300 points. And so every project, depending on whether you're doing the project at, um, at type what you see or pseudocode or English description, you'll get different yeah. amounts of points per project. And then you'll also get actually different amounts of total points because the projects are different lengths. So the, the, the bigger the project that you do and the harder the difficulty that you do, um, the more, uh, the more um, points you'll get. So I'm just trying to see if I can. So if I just share this again. Um, okay. Am I back to the, um, am I back? Can you see the hatchet, the leaderboard again? Uh, no, so I'm going to X out of this. I'm going to share the, no. there we go. Okay, so we're back to the leaderboard. Um, but yeah, so that, Kingsley, that's the answer to your question is that, uh, that uh, you can get, and Kingsley, your hardest challenge you finished was a seven star challenge. That's 700 points, um, which is pretty cool. So if we go to uh, this dashboard, you could see that for challenge points over here, I need to get 1,100 more points. And if I do 11, a, a seven star challenge, that's 700. That'll get me from 700 to 1,400. Yeah. That's like a lot of the way already from, from level four to level five. And that's all I need to do to finish. I need to do a bunch of challenges to, to get that done. Um, so uh, yeah, mostly three or four star challenges. Probably if you're on level like if you're level zero or one, you need to do one star challenges. If you're level two or three, it's two star challenges. And level three and four is three star challenges. So you're doing the right level of challenges when you do the challenges at um, uh, three or four star challenges for level three and four. Um, 
So next question, did anybody do any challenges uh, or anything different than type what you see? Has anybody done a bunch of pseudocode uh, projects? Yep. Yeah, Ethan, awesome. What, what projects did you do, Ethan? Um, I don't know. I, I kind of uh, just have been, been doing all my projects lately in pseudocode. That's awesome. I don't really know which ones I did. That's awesome. That's really great. Um, hi, Kingsley. What's pseudocode? So pseudocode is when you do a project. So we, we were talking about doing like egg, egg thrower. So let me see if I can find this project. Um, egg, egg thrower. Oh, egg thrower is locked for me. So I can't do egg thrower because I'm a student now. And so in order to get the egg thrower, I have to be more advanced. I have to be level eight, but I'm only level four. So let's see if I can find um, one of the projects we're given in chat that I can find over here. There are, um, let's see, there's, there's a great difference. Um, hold the staples. Someone wanted to do hold the staples. Um, static. Okay, let's do static. Static is really fun. Um, so I don't know if you guys have ever seen static on a TV. Uh, in the old days when we used to have TVs and we didn't used to just use the internet, the TVs actually got the signal through uh, an antenna. Okay. Yep. And an antenna um, went to... Um, Wait, did you say that? <laughs> Yeah, so let's let's take a look at at what uh, old TV antenna. I want to see if we can get a picture of this, just because it's kind of fun. Um, like uh, old TV antenna, how does it work? Let's see if we can see um, images. I want to see if you see a, a cool images. Um, are there any cool images out here? No. Um, yeah, no, the, this is not working. I do this with my kid, my five-year-old kid all the time, and sometimes we find something good and sometimes we we don't. So, um, yeah, so we're going to skip that and we're going to go back to Hatch because it doesn't work. But if you want to look it up, old TVs used to have an antenna and there used to be a broadcast tower. I don't know if you've ever been outside and seen a big, huge tower. And, um, you know, uh, yeah, I had one way back. We only had four channels. We get a fifth if I put the antenna on our head. And here's what happened. Like the antenna basically worked best when it was high up and outside your house. So you could like move the antenna around and get different channels. So, but when you didn't get a channel, what happens, you got static. And so um, this is static and this is a draw function. And Kingsley, to answer your question, this is pseudocode. The, the, the level that I've been working at is pseudocode and um, pseudocode is basically one line of English to one line of code and it allows you to kind of do planning and think a little bit before you code so when it, when it says create a draw function I have to think to myself okay what does that look like in code so I kind of know what it looks like in code because I have to go var draw equals function over here um, and then it says create a for loop so then I have to know, okay, how does a for loop work? And if I don't know exactly how it works, I can always click research and the hatch reference manual. And then I can look up for loop and there's two pages and it kind of tells me this is what a for loop looks like. So I can be like, okay, instead of having to do type what you see, which is just typing out what I see on the screen, I can go one level higher in difficulty and say, okay, well, I can do the research and figure out how do for loops um, work together and, uh, and then when I have that, I can build in. What's this other page on for loops in case I need it? This loop will repeat four times because it's going up by two all the way to 10. So it's actually going to go like two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. Um, this loop will repeat uh, five times because it's starting at number five and it's going up by one. So it's going to go basically uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And this loop will repeat 10 times because it's starting at 10 and it's going down to zero and it's going to go nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So that's how for loops work. We can go back to static over here and, uh, and create this for loop. So for loop, uh, or var X equals zero, cause it says X begins at zero. It's going to loop as if, uh, yeah, it's going to loop if X is less than 500. 
Um, and then I think these are supposed to be commas here. And we can go back to reference manual and check, is that true? So in between, no, we need semicolons in between. So we can always go back and forth and take a look at the research and take a look at the, uh, the project and, and get it right. And X equals one, so that's gonna be X plus uh, plus. And then we need our curly brackets. And now it says declare an var num, declare a variable and assign it a random of a, a round. So round uh, random zero comma one. Uh, and then call the no stroke function, no stroke. And Kingsley, what I'm doing here is, um, uh, what I'm doing here is, uh, is I'm working from pseudocode and I'm basically figuring out how to do the project just so you can see kind of what that looks like. Um, and uh, so no stroke. And then if num is equal to zero, whenever you do an equal sign inside an if statement, you have to have two equal signs. Um, because that's, an, that's basically a testing to see if they're equal. Whereas if you're declaring something like up here, you have one equal sign because you're assigning it a value. So one is a test and you use two equal signs and one is a value and you use one equal sign. Uh, and then here we're gonna set the color to, to white. So fill at 255 um, and then else. So then we have else open bracket and then set the fill color to black. Um, and then this says, this says that it saw, it's meant to see triple equal sign. So what happens if I put a triple equal sign? Okay, it goes away. Um, set fill color to black and end if draw a square at random position at, of size one. So we're gonna say, um, we're gonna say draw a square, which is a rect random zero comma 400 comma random zero comma 400 because that's a random position left to right and that's a random position up to down and then it's going to be size one and boom we have static so what we what we did is we built this by pseudocode uh, by taking a look at the pseudocode and going to our research tab and doing some research and then going back to the static to figure it out by ourselves um, so that is st static. Uh, okay, so that's static. We can take a look at the challenges. Make the static randomly multicolored. So uh, in order to do that, we need to make the fill color over here a random number. So we can take this and go random, zero comma 255, comma random, zero, zero comma 255, comma random, uh, zero comma 255. And now it should be all sorts of uh, colors, except for, I think right now it's black and colors, but I want it to be um, random no matter what. And so now it's gonna be totally multicolored because no matter what the condition is, it's gonna create a, um, a, random, uh, a random color. So I'm trying to think. So that's basically big wins and little victories. And we did a project as, as well. Um, next is we're gonna do dealing with tricky bits. So what code or challenge stumped you? So you can put this in chat or you can unmute yourself and just shout out um, uh, about uh, if there are any code, codes or challenges that, that stumped you. Yeah, go ahead. Ball Boy Challenge 3. Should we take a look at Ball Boy Challenge 3? Let's take a look at it. So we're going to go, I'm finished. Um, and then we're going to go back to Project Library. And hopefully Ball Boy Challenge 3 is not too tough. Ball Boy. Uh, oh, I'm locked on Ball Boy. So I'll have to go back and change myself to a teacher again uh, so that we can do Ball Boy Challenge 3. So this is uh, Wendy. Um, Wendy Search. I'm going to unlock myself because I can do that and we're going to make this a teacher and then we save. And then if we go over here and we refresh, 
เอ่อ ball boy ball boy ball boy challenge three is this the emoji one um why do I not have a ball boy no oh it's add a timer okay so we're going to uh we're going to add a timer here that's that's a good challenge so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go to ball boy and just copy in the original code because I uh, just just to make things faster right because we're working on we're not working on building ball boy we're actually going to just work on doing the challenge so ball boy uh, boy so we're going to pick up the tennis balls and here is ball boy in a nutshell it is 28 lines of code we're going to take it we're going to copy it in here and here's ball boy and it works, right? We can pick up the tennis codes. And if we want, we can actually make this a little bit more yellow. Um, it's 200. Uh, yeah, that's kind of five. There we go. That kind of looks more like a yellow tennis ball to me. And now what we want to do is we want to have a timer. And when that timer finishes, we want to um, show how many balls the user picked up. So how are we going to do this? Well, if we go to our project library, let's see if there's any projects that involve the timer. There's a basic timer project over here, right? So what we can do, and again, I'm going to speed through this a little bit so you guys can kind of um, see the end result, which is a little bit better. So we can take this timer, basic timer, learn how to create a basic timer. And so we're going to take this timer project and we're going to copy it into the ball boy project and it's going to break everything, but then we're going to fix it. So this is our uh, timer project. And then we have up here our ball boy project and they're kind of together. So we're going to start putting them together. So we need start milliseconds var. Um, we're going to take this and we're going to put this over here. And just so we can keep track of this, I'm going to say ball boy variables, right? And this is going to be uh, uh, timer variables. Okay. Um, and then we have, this is the actual timer. So let's take this and we can probably just put it at the very top over here. Um, and milliseconds is going to give us how many seconds we have, right? So this is basically counting in seconds. Um, if we wanted to know the actual seconds, we could actually take this number uh, and divide by 100, right? And now it looks a little weird because we have this thing. So let's if we just go around uh, this um, comma one, how about comma two? Um, well, we, ha we have, uh, we have over here, our, our, it's not milliseconds anymore, it's actually seconds. So we're gonna go back over here and where it says display time, uh, we're gonna take this up here and we actually don't want to know, um, oh, we actually have uh, a, a command for seconds here. So let's, let's actually get rid of all this work that I did, this rounding, because it, it wasn't helpful. And uh, so we're gonna go back to just this and this, and now we have the number of seconds over there. And when we display the time, we actually don't want to display it down here where it says seconds. We want to probably display it because now we're going to bring it back to ball boy. We're going to, we're going to display it at 10 comma 10. Okay, so that's pretty good. We don't actually want the return character and we want this text size, I think probably to be like a little bit smaller. Um, but we also want to have a colon over here and this is too far over. So we're just going to add like another hundred over here. Uh, maybe we should make this like 80. So it's in the corner, uh, 60, 50. That's pretty good, right? Now we have the number of seconds and it's counting the number of seconds. We actually don't need milliseconds. So let's get rid of that. And now um, we actually, this, uh, this background, um, we're going to just take this background and put it into uh, here and then get rid of this draw function. 
So now you can see that the seconds over here are actually counting up and we can basically see how many seconds it is. So that's uh, this, when the timer ends, then we want, um, we, we want to end it. So we want to say, we actually want this counting down, not counting up, right? So we actually want time left over here, time left uh, is that, and we actually want to see, let's say 20 minus, seconds uh, um, what if we do um, uh, what if we create a var uh, we're going to create another variable up here which is uh, the timer stuff we're going to create something which is var uh, time left equals zero uh, equals 20 um, and then over here hopefully we can actually go just uh, time left and if we take this it's going to just say time left a little bit what if we get rid of this text align um, text align left center, center center so we actually have to put this uh, time left now over a little bit um, and then it says the time left but we have to actually say time left uh, you know equals 20 minus seconds. Is this gonna break it or is this gonna work? So now it works. We actually have this timer down and we then have to say, uh, so we then have to say, if uh, time left is greater than zero, and we we're gonna put brackets around here, um, then uh, display time left, um, and then we're going to go else. Um, we're going to actually have our text here. Text is going to be uh, score colon and plus, um, and this is going to be what's our score over here? Score is print score, print score is just score. So score equals score. Um, and then let's say just display it at 100 comma 10. Let's see if this works. And so it's gonna work and I'm just going to make this a super fast, um, not 50, but like five. So let's see what happens here. If I pick up some balls for five seconds to test it. Uh, so that's good, it shows us the score but then it allows us to keep going the score. Um, we actually wanna go over here and say, if uh, time left is greater than zero, then, because what we're going is where the score goes up, we're actually adding to, to where the score goes up and saying only increase the score if time left is, if there's still time left. So now let's see if this works. So we're picking up the balls and this says score four, and now that's it. So that is the end of this. Uh, um, uh, yeah, so that's the end of that challenge. So there's been a, a lot of chats in here. Ball Boy Challenge three from Niles. Niles, was that helpful? Did that kind of explain how to put together uh, like um, challenge three from Ball Boy? Yes. Yes. Niles, can you say yes or no? Yes. Niles, do you have any uh, any questions? No. Okay, Niles, I'm gonna assume that that worked for you. Um, so because we did this, we can actually click this mark is finished and approve the challenge, which is a seven star challenge, which is awesome. And um, yeah, and so that's ball voice. So, um, Okay, so go through what to do with the rest of your day. That's the next part of this webinar is we're going to actually talk about stuff to do for the rest of the day. And I believe if I could find it, I found a really neat, um, uh, a really neat uh, list of a whole bunch of things that you could do. Uh, it's not that one. Um, 
it's not that one. Um, I have a whole bunch of tabs here. Where is this tab that I had that had a whole bunch? Oh, here we go. So I'm going to try and take this and put it into the, um, the screen over here. Hopefully this works. So uh, guys, can you see the screen of uh, like quarantine activities? So these are things that you can do um, uh, throughout the day. So for, for fitness, uh, there is Cosmic Kids Yoga and there's Core Power, you know, there's virtual dance sessions, uh, Beachbody Kids um, at Vimeo.com. And what I'm gonna do just so you guys have it is I'm gonna put this, um, this link in the chat box. So uh, yeah, Kingsley says that he hates COVID-19 and it sucks. I actually think it really sucks as well. So we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a time probably in like three minutes to just talk about what's going on. And like, do we, how are we living with, with COVID-19? Cause it's a big deal. Um, so arts and crafts, there's Mo Williams drawing, which is really awesome. Every day he does a little drawing exercise, almost like this but for drawing and he's Mo Williams. So he's a much better drawer than I am coder. Uh, how to tune, how to create tunes. Crafts over here and kid crafts. Um, there's a whole bunch of stories, books, music that you can uh, take a look at. And there's a bunch of zoo stuff as well. So if you wanna see zoo animals, you can see that. Um, there's museums. So these are virtual museums that you can go through. Uh, the Louvre tour, and the Van Gogh Museum, these are super famous museums you can take a look at uh, and basically just do virtual tours in. Um, you can also do tour travel tours. So if you wanna sit down with your parents and do a tour of the Great Wall of China or volcanoes or glaciers um, or the surface of Mars, there's a surface of Mars cam. I wanna take a look at this. Let's, let's open this up and let's take a look at this because it looks kind of neat. So um, Enter the 360 on November 26, 2011. Uh, we're going to skip the intro because I want to know what this looks like. Um, so this is a Mars camera. You can, oh, look, there comes the Mars rover. And with this Mars rover, um, look, it's opening up and it's looking around and it's spotting a bunch of uh, territory. And it's looking around again, how to access Mars. You can learn about the Curiosity Rover. You can move around and you can travel to different mission maps by clicking the map icon. So that is awesome. So let's see, what happens if I satellite view, terrain reel. Let's take a look at the satellite view. And um, what happens if we just click on this? This is really fun. Awesome. Okay, so I suggest you guys take a look at, at the surface of Mars cam because it looks really cool. There's a bunch of learning you can do. There's math here, brain to pop, there's science stuff, Khan Academy, family rhythms. There's a, there's a bunch of um, uh, really great sources here. And typing lessons for adults and kids are really, really awesome. My five-year-old does this because he wants to um, do Hatch and he's only five. So he's not allowed to do it for two, two or three years because um, you shouldn't do hatch until you're at least seven or seven and a half. In the meantime, he's learning how to type and, it, and he really enjoys it. Um, so these are a bunch of resources that you can do. And now I just want to talk about, um, I just want to open the, the floor. Does anyone want to talk about kind of their best part or the worst part of their day um, because of COVID-19? Uh, Kingsley, do you want to like, complain a little bit about how COVID-19 sucks? Do you want to unmute and, and uh, just um, say, what, what's the biggest thing you miss about, uh, about life now that COVID-19 is around? School, uh, how I got into Hatch. Anybody? Well, I don't get to talk with my friends. Uh, I yep. I wish so, I could um, Okay, that was a short, short segment because I think that everybody's probably going through the same things, um, which is there's uh, school and after school activities. Surya said school and after school activities. Yeah, those things are uh, missing. And uh, someone has spent a bunch of money on online stuff. Um, 
and clubs. And, and Ruta says that she wants to complete clubs. So, uh, and Ruta, what was your favorite club at, uh, at school that you're missing? Or if you want to unmute mm -hmm. and the, any sports club. Yeah, you know, I think the, one of the worst things about COVID-19 is just that we can't go out and play sports. You know, it's getting to be spring. And I remember in spring, there was track and field was a spring sport. Soccer is a spring sport. And it's just so much fun to go out and play on fields with lots of other people. And it really sucks that, that we can't do that. Um, you know, and, and, and it's, it's tough, right? I think it's tough for Anaruda. It's tough for Kingsley. It's tough for Caradoc, which is my son. And we're all going through this together. And, you know, I think one of the kind of really interesting pieces, oh, um, Sebastian's kid missed school and guitar club. Um, and uh, he never would have known about Hatch if it wasn't for COVID-19. So that's a positive. But, you know, music with other people is another big thing. Um, you know, I remember I was in band uh, when I was in middle school and high school. And, uh, and I remember learning this song called Sweet Georgia Brown. So if you guys want, you can look up Sweet Georgia Brown. It's this awesome song that has a swing to it. And it's really fun to listen to. And I remember learning it with like 10 or 15 other people. And I can imagine that like today, if you're, if, if you love music and, and you can't do that, you know, I would have yeah, yeah. never been able to learn Sweet George Brown. Um, yeah. And then the other thing Aruda is saying is that like, exactly. we don't know when school has told us when it will start, right? Like at first it was two weeks and that was kind of today was going to be the last day, but now it's like May 4th and, and it might go beyond that. And, you know, I think that that at least um, is a little bit scary. You know, Kingsley is saying no more school for the entire year, right? That there's been conversations that maybe there won't be school at all until September. Um, and, um, you know, that's also a little scary because as much as like sometimes we hate school because look, sometimes school is like super, super boring. Um, let's be real. Um, and, and sometimes we do school online. I think we all have a right to an education, right? And we all want to learn because like learning how to read and how to write numeracy skills okay. and science and history, like that's what allows us to really fully experiencing the world. Oh, recess is the only good part of school. So Kingsley is missing recess of school. And yeah, I mean, I think right now my kids, um, we go out like a couple times a day to just get some fresh air. Uh, we haven't really been able to hang out with friends um, we've met a couple people in the neighborhood and then we're like across the street from each other and we wave hi, hi to each other. And it, you know, it's some level of connection, but it's not the same thing as being able to ride your bikes together or play soccer together or go to the park together. Um, and oh, um, that's annoying. No, I, th I think that it's, uh, it's yeah. difficult. I think we're all going through it together, which is, oh, um, to repeat. Okay, you know, which is something, right? Like we can talk about it. Um, you know, we can do FaceTime or Zoom chats with people if we can. Um, but yeah, I think it's I, I think it's a little bit different, difficult. At the same time, we're all going through it together. And I think that that's like something that you can sit back and reflect and say, hey, listen, even though I hate the fact that I can't play baseball, I know that there are other people who can't play soccer and other people who can't play basketball. And we're like all in this together. Um, and uh, And I think that's, that's something to talk about a little bit. Um, yeah, so look, I think that this has been a little bit of different webinar. Um, we did a little bit of coding and did one really tough challenge of the, uh, of the, the ball boy challenge for the advanced people. And we did a couple of shorter projects as well. Um, we talked about big wins and little victories, which I think was great. And we had a couple of people make it onto the leaderboard and the last, um, thing that I want to ask is, um, have any of you told any of your friends about hatch coding? So, um, I don't know if, if, uh, Bailey, are, are you still no. on the, the call? I know that you sent me a message about, um, uh, about like introducing people to hatch coding. No. Has anybody in the webinar shared hatch with someone else? No. Yes. Uh, Justin, that's awesome. 
Um, that is fantastic for doing that. Justin, who did you share? Um, yeah. And Surya, who, who have you guys shared Hatch with? He's one of my friends. Mom and your friend, which is awesome. And have they told anybody? Do you have any friends on Hatch with you because of, because of the fact that you've shared it um, with other people? No, not uh -huh. yet. I don't think so yet. Well, Ethan, you could tell other people about Hatch and maybe they could join. And when we have these new group projects, hopefully in the next week or so, you can actually literally, even though if you're only level one or two uh, and you're just starting Hatch, you could do a, a, a group project with other people and we could actually maybe take a look at some of those group projects as well. So um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to wrap up the webinar. I think it's been a really good webinar. And I think we've covered a lot of uh, ground and every day it'll be a little bit different. We'll make it a little bit better. If you have any suggestions at all, um, feel free to just email uh, success at, hatch can at hatchcoding.com and say, this is what I'd like to see in the webinar. And, you know, it's just an experiment in a way that we can get people together and, uh, and have a little bit of a connection and, and learn a little bit about Hatch. So, um, you know, Everybody, thanks a lot. I hope uh, I hope all of you have a really wonderful day and a wonderful weekend. And I'll see you again on Monday. Okay, bye, Ethan. Awesome backgrounds. Those look awesome. Those are really cool. I love those backgrounds. Those are great. Um, yeah, look at that, JK. Um, that's an awesome background as well. Little Z Nation. That's fantastic. Um, and Avery, you have an awesome background as well. That looks really cool. Um, uh, oh, look, there's upside down Justin there. That's, that's pretty <laughs> awesome. That's really fantastic. It's fun to play with Zoom and do like neat things. Um, How do you do it? Like you're, you're dancing to the stuff. Okay, um, guys, I'm going to end the meeting in, in five seconds. I hope everybody had a wonderful webinar and we'll see you next week. Five, four, three, two, one. Hello.